Like an unofficial gag order on all these guys. They can't talk. What is this, North Korea? What's that? Humans are worth a lot more than drugs right now. There is a huge influx of migrants coming over. There's a very bad situation in Central America. Cartels, smugglers, traffickers realizing, hey, we can get our product, and that's what it's called, the product, people into the United States and make money. Children are being rented. We're seeing the biggest influx in 20 years. What's the solution to this crisis? Okay, I'm gonna get to that in a second. Good morning, guys. This is a video about the border crisis that is currently going on here between the US and Mexico. I've been here for roughly a week, and wow, I have uh, seen and heard quite a bit. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I've come into, uh, sort of an overview, and then also my thoughts about maybe where this thing should go. All right, firstly, it's, it's a crazy cat and mouse game currently going on. So because of catch and release, you know, that's when migrants come over at non-legal entry points um, and are released into the United States, there is a huge influx of migrants coming over. There's a very bad situation in Central America. People are fleeing from terrible situations. I've heard some horrific stories throughout my time here. So people are, a lot of people are fleeing, you know, hell let's say uh, but with that comes an opportunity and what's going on down here right below the border is cartels uh, smugglers traffickers realizing hey we can get our product and that's what it's called the product people into the united states and make money what's that I'm independent journalist doing a whole story on the border. Okay, okay. Loving you guys, sticking up for you guys, okay. and trying to expose what's going on. Yeah. Thanks, man. Keep doing the good work. You are good. Thank you. And so that's what makes this very complex because yesterday I came across a group that, you know, I don't know, 20 or 30 migrants on the side of the road. You look into their eyes, they're, they're, they're really, you know, tired, stressed. Uh, scared it's in a horrific journey that these people go on and at that very moment I, I you know all I thought was I want these people to succeed in life I, I hope the best for them right and so if you're putting all your time into helping people here you, you know you can't not be human you know and want to help them um, but then where where is the line and I've traveled 85 countries, lived abroad in four, just moved back last year, and I see the world a different way. The countries that have an excellent rule of law are successful, the ones that don't aren't, and what we're doing is incentivizing people to break the law. You know, coming over uh, a point of entry like this is illegal. And so what's also messed up about this is once they get in, they're taken care of, um, they're gonna go into shelters, they're gonna get transported to different parts of the country. I'm sure all their resources are taken care of in the beginning, uh, but the thing is they're not legal. And which means I, I don't believe they're able to work legally, which means how do they support themselves, which means maybe in 10, 15 years, they're caught and sent home. And I actually heard from a guy that was caught and sent home. Uh, lived in the States for 20 years, raised his family here. Sent back, made another journey up. Hi guys. Made another journey, came back up. Um, you know, this guy can never be stable in his life. You know, he's not legal in this country because he came in illegally to begin with. So what's that? What's, what's the message we're sending to these people now if they come in illegally and uh, open arms, but then down the road, I guess the only an answer or remedy to that would be amnesty, right? And is that the strategy? I have no idea. I have no idea what the strategy is behind this. I just know that this exactly what's currently going on is quite unsustainable. We're seeing the biggest influx, uh, I was told in, in 20 years, and this last month was the biggest. And there is a situation down there for many people that is not getting better anytime soon. Immigration, 100% believe in it. This is not an anti-immigration video. This is a, 
We have a crisis. What's the solution to this crisis? Okay, I'm gonna get to that in a second. This country is built by immigrants. We need immigration. I firmly believe that, maybe you don't, but I believe we need immigration in this country. Uh, but the difference be between, like what I was saying, is countries that are successful and ones that aren't, is the rule of law. And not only are we, we're breaking that principle, we're incentivizing illegal behavior and disincentivizing legal behavior. You know, there are many people trying to get into this country legally, and it's not easy. I've, been to many countries from around the world where people are always asking me, hey, can you get me into the States? Hey, I've been trying this and that for years and they're trying everything. And these are people trying to do it the right way and not getting access. But the people that are doing it illegally, and I understand this is where it gets complex. They're coming from horrific situations, many of them, um, but they're getting the access and the ones that are trying to do it the right way aren't. There's no way to know the numbers exactly of what are the amount of good intention people coming in. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of mothers, I've seen a lot of children, I've seen, I've seen some men, less men than mothers, uh, than women for sure. But now we have a situation where there's so many people coming in and these guys are so overwhelmed that there's a lot of bad actors coming in. And these are not stupid people running these organizations below the border. They know, they know what's going on. I mean, just going down the river the other day, there are scouts all along this river. Actually, kids get wrapped into it, right? And they're warning the next scout and the next scout, a boat's coming, border, border patrol's over there, whatever. They know what they're doing. They're good at this game. It's nothing new, right? Uh, so when, when border patrol gets bogged down with a group of migrants that are, that are really leaving a difficult situation, their resources have to go there. That's when the traffickers, that's when the cartels know to move the dark stuff. That could be the sex traffickers. That could be the drugs, obviously. It's interesting. I did talk to, I did talk to a trafficker. Uh, that was quite uh, surreal. Humans are worth a lot more than drugs right now. So that's like the drugs will always come through. There's always that demand here in the United States, obviously, and the world. Uh, but humans are getting more money. So there's a big focus on humans right now. Another sickening part of the story is because if you have a child, you know, children are being rented. Again, is this 5% is this, uh, of the stories or 40% or 3%? I don't know. I can't say, and I'm not gonna act like I do know. To understand this situation fully, we're talking years down here. I think you'd have to work from different angles to really understand what's going on. So again, keep that in mind, guys. I have no authority here and I'm not acting to be like one. But the fact that we have very little investigative journalism, let's say, going into the current crisis, that's saddening. That's saddening and it's also saddening that we have a, a, a government that's not promoting or not um, incentivizing our free press to go in to, to really, in my opinion, the biggest issue this country is facing right now. Taxpayers are paying a lot of money for this. So everyone that comes over, you know, they're, again, they're getting plane tickets, um, they're getting housed, they're getting fed, and I, I don't know how long that lasts for. I don't know what healthcare is provided exactly, or where they go, or what, you know, rent is provided for. How you doing? Thank you. How do you tell the American person that's very poor and down on their luck, especially after this year of COVID, hey, you know, we're not gonna help you, but we're gonna help someone despite their circumstances. I understand very bad circumstances for many of these people, but we're gonna help them over you. What, what message does that send? This currently is unsustainable. These guys are getting, these guys are getting overloaded and they're not meant to be taking care of kids. They're meant, their jobs are to protect our border. That's what they're hired for. Now they can't talk right now, um, but they're very, happy that someone is covering their story because they feel like their voices are, are shadowed to some degree. All right, let's add some more complexity. Most of these people working uh, for the US government, good people with good intentions, there's gonna, be, there's gonna be a small percentage, again, I can't give you a number, that are in with the other side, that are making some big money off of this. And again, very, very small percentage from what I've heard. 
uh, the vast majority are doing their jobs properly. But that also exists, if you can believe that. If it doesn't get complex enough, there we go. Then when we get to the US side, all sorts of trafficking and trafficking networks uh, that are currently running illegally on the US side. It's not just a on the border problem. I wanna make that point um, because this problem is going everywhere in the country and you might not see it where you live and I'm not trying to scare you. This isn't scare clickbait. Uh, but what I'm saying is, you know, a, a, a homeowner told me yesterday, um, he made a good point. He's like, well, if someone, in, I told him I was born in Vermont. He's like, well, what if someone in Vermont, all of a sudden they're living in a peaceful place and, you know, they have migrants coming over their, their land at night and on the other side of the street is a, is a trafficker sitting waiting in a car and there's all this illegal business going on and they don't feel safe with their kids out at night walking around the neighborhood, which they once did, okay? So put everything aside. Imagine that your life changes because of policies. Of course, they're gonna think a certain way. Everyone wants to live in safety and security. Yeah, and I also wanna mention a, a sad part about the, the somewhat secrecy of this whole thing down here is, for example, I wanted to go in, into the McAllen bus station the other night and there's, a, there's a, a guard out front and he's saying, I cannot enter, I cannot enter the city bus station. I said, why? He's like, uh, he said it's private, which is false. There are Greyhound buses going out of there. Uh, but I had to work, I had to work to get, you know, who knows, maybe I wanted a bus ticket. I had to work and I acted like I did, but I as a citizen had to convince someone that I could go into the bus station um, and it was because it was full of, full with migrants. So the migrants are going off and that's another topic. Okay, COVID, we have COVID. Now there is testing. They are bringing through, through a system here, but from what I heard, if they test positive, there's five to seven days before they're released and can go wherever. And also when they first come in into the Donna facility here in McAllen, it's, it's packed, it's overcrowded. I mean, there's, what are you gonna do? I mean, there's, they can't build fast enough. They're, they're expanding the place. So if COVID is this thing that we've all had to deal with in this country the last year and been told, especially in California, uh, you know, how not to be around people and how your business needs to be shut down and, you know, this and that, all these rules, then we're packing people together. I mean, and putting them on planes and putting them on, on buses. So where's the, you know, see what I'm saying? My oversimplified solution here is someone entering a country illegally over something like this. Well, that's an illegal act and they need to go through ports of entry. Uh, that needs to be streamlined in the sense that we let a certain amount of people in, which we already do, but I, I don't know if that, how much that gets increased by or whatnot. Um, but you do it legally, so you don't, you, you, everyone seems to get screwed in this process. I mean, the U.S. citizens get screwed because there are a lot of illegal people now in their country. Uh, the illegal person, the asylum seeker, because most of, I, I say illegal because most of them, from what I've heard, their asylum claims will get thrown out. You know, it's not going to, they're not going to be able to prove it. Um, I don't think it's an easy thing to prove. So then they're not legal here. And then what do you do for work? And what do you do in 20 years when you get caught? Uh, I hired a guy many years ago. He came over when he was three months old and he was fearful of getting sent back to Mexico. How messed up is that? He's like, I never lived in Mexico. I don't know anything about Mexico. I don't want to go to Mexico. This is my country. So what do you do with that? I think that's insanity to send that guy back. Okay, so what are you setting up down the road here for people? And it's just one big mess. I wish, I wish we could have the leadership to go into a, a strong conversation on this. And unfortunately, everything is politicized, 100%. Everything's completely politics here. And I think a lot of people are getting screwed. I don't think, I know, a lot of people are getting screwed in the process. So we need to get our house in order first in America. It's like, it's like if you're gonna invite some guests over for dinner, you know, make sure your, your kitchen's clean and things are set up and you got food ready and you know, it's a nice environment. And look, we have so many problems in this country alone right now. And if we're gonna allow an unlimited number of guests say in, 
and our house isn't in order, we're not gonna create a better situation in the country down the road if we keep on this strategy. This is an area where it's just a concrete wall, razor wire. And I know this is a big divisive issue, the wall. Okay, so what I've been told, you know, the wall's not gonna stop anyone from coming in. That, that's ridiculous. But what it does do is create an infrastructure. So see this infrastructure? You have a road here, you have a road here. These guys can go back and forth on the road easier. They can apprehend migrants easier. And it's like, it's not like you can just get up this easily. Sometimes, sometimes there's ladders, other times ropes. Um, you know, not every migrant's gonna have a ladder or the right way to get over the wall. So they, they congregate. It, it basically makes border patrols uh, job much easier to have this structure. This is what I've been told. Does it send the right or wrong message? That's up for you to decide. That's, that's your opinion. I'm not gonna tell you what to think on that. Watch other content, don't, just don't take my word. This is my experiences. Uh, I did my best to put my ear to the ground as much as possible, to talk to as many people, to see as many things. It's not easy access out here, as you might imagine. I think I'll be coming back too, because I'm, I'm, I'm highly interested and it's, and it's such an important issue. It's an issue of our time at the moment and it needs more exposure. You know, like I was saying, what are we in North Korea? Journalists can't go into the detention facilities. I think they were let in one day or very limited exposure. Can't do ride alongs anymore. I mean, there's a gag, like an unofficial gag order on all these guys. They can't talk. What is this, North Korea? I mean, come on. Like, let's, let's be mature here. There's a, there's a crisis. There's a serious problem. Let's, let's try to address the problem. Maybe something's happening behind the scenes right now. I hope, I hope when this goes live, there's, there's been some action taken by the administration to do something differently. Uh, demoralizing our, our border security is people working in it, probably not a good idea. Uh, letting everyone in, in you, know, you know, that has a kid, uh, not a good idea because people gaming the system. Kids, kids for rent right now. It's heavy, heavy shit. All right, guys. Thanks for coming along. I got a whole series. I'll put it in the playlist below on the border. I think I did, what, five videos on that. Uh, didn't hit every story I wanted to, but you'll see some different angles. You'll see some different perspectives from, from different people and hear what they have to say. And lastly, I wanna thank the United Cajun Navy. Now, they, they're not involved here right now, but they do disaster relief and, uh, you know, hurricanes, floods, that sort of thing, all over the South. They might be coming here. Uh, the reason I really wanna thank them is they, you know, without them, there's no way I would've gotten into this, I would've gotten this access. And as you can see, you know, in my series, if you saw it, Raul, Raul is, He's the one that knows the lay of the land. He's got the contacts. He could get to the camera in front of the right people. So without Raul and the United Cajun Navy, this wouldn't have happened. If you wanna to donate to my channel, sometimes people donate to my work on Patreon or through PayPal, please don't donate to the United Cajun Navy. I'll leave their link below. Hope you got something out of all this. If it seems confusing and difficult, it's because it is. Uh, Watch my series if you're interested and watch other people's work too. Till the next one, take care.